So here at ShopRite, we do offer our free nutrition services. So we provide one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling and education. We can help with meal prep and recipe ideas. We do grocery store tours. We do in-store samplings and tabling events. We also do a lot of community events and we do online cooking and group classes. All right, so for healthy holiday eating, it's really important that you do not skip meals on holidays. Um, a lot of people tend to do this because they think that maybe they'll overeat at a holiday meal. I typically don't recommend that. It's important to have nutrition throughout the day. So we do wanna make sure we're having spaced apart meals. Um, even if you do plan on eating a little bit more than usual on a holiday meal, it's important to make sure you're getting nutrition in. Breakfast is one of the most important meals of the day. So making sure you're not skipping that meal. Um, also staying hydrated, that's really important. Most people are chronically dehydrated. So we do wanna make sure we're staying hydrated. Water is one of the best ways to stay hydrated. Um, most people, they wanna drink about half of their body weight in fluid ounces a day, which is a lot considering a lot of people don't get nearly half of that. Um, so if you don't get nor nearly anywhere near that, you do wanna recommend, you do wanna like increase slowly. You don't wanna try and get as much hydration in going from zero to a hundred. Um, you wanna make sure that you're slowly increasing your water intake. Um, you also wanna make sure that you're enjoying your favorite holiday foods. So holiday eating, yes, holidays are a stressful time of the year, especially if you're trying to lose weight or maintain your weight um, because there's a lot of indulgent foods. Um, but we wanna make sure that we're able to enjoy those favorite holiday foods, whether they're a healthy choice or they're not as healthy for us. Um, you can definitely include everything in moderation, all, ki all kinds of foods. If there's a dessert that you really enjoy, you wanna make sure you're having that. But again, in moderation. So you don't need the huge piece of um, apple pie or pumpkin pie or whatever it is that you may have. Um, you can do a smaller piece and you're still getting what you want, what you're craving. Um, I do recommend not overfilling your plate. That's one thing. You can always go back for seconds if you're still hungry. Um, so a lot of people, maybe they have skipped meals all day and they're really looking forward to this holiday meal and they put large portion sizes on their plate. Um, you don't necessarily need all of that because then you feel obligated to eat all of that. Um, especially if you skipped all your meals throughout the day, you're going to be really hungry and you're going to eat a lot at that one meal. So again, not skipping those meals, making sure you're having healthy meals throughout the day, and then also watching your serving sizes. So again, if you're still hungry 15, 20 minutes after finishing your meal, you can definitely go back for seconds. But definitely getting in tune with your body and learning to listen to those hunger and fullness cues. That's really important. Um, I like to recommend bringing a healthy dish for everyone to enjoy. So if you're going to someone's house for a holiday or going to a holiday party, um, bringing something healthy that's really um, tasty, something that a lot of people you think would like, that's really great. Cause that's also setting a good example, not for your, just for yourself and your family, but for others. Um, and there's a lot of great options that are healthier that you can definitely bring. We're gonna talk about those as well. And then again, modeling those healthy food behaviors for your family members, your friends, if you're a parent, a grandparent, um, it's really important to set those examples for children because children really do like to model what they see. So setting those healthy food behaviors for your children. All right, so what to bring to a holiday party? Um, I always rec recommend asking the host or the hostess what type of dishes they would like, um, especially if it's a potluck dinner or potluck meal. Um, it's really um, something that sometimes people really need to plan out, like what types of dishes people are bringing. So it's important to ask. Um, if the choice is up to you, again, aim for something that's healthy, but also delicious, that fills a gap in most people's diets. So what I come across a lot of times, a lot of people are missing their fruits, their vegetables, and their whole grain servings. Um, so some examples of things that you could bring, a winter fruit salad, sliced fruit with a protein fruit dip. So I like to do um, some non-fat plain Greek yogurt with some peanut butter mixed in. That's a great protein fruit dip because um, protein is going to help slow down that release of sugar into the blood from that fruit. Um, so a variety of different fruits you could do with that fruit dip. That's a great option. Maybe you could have a little toothpick so people aren't touching the fruit. Um, veggie tray. A veggie tray is always a great idea. You could do a low-fat ranch or you can do, um, I like to make my own dip. I'll do like a non-fat plain Greek yogurt with some kind of seasoning in it, like maybe an Italian seasoning, um, a guacamole seasoning in there, maybe some more avocado for some healthy fats. You can make homemade salsa. Hello, how are you? Whole grain tortillas. Um, yes, you can take one of those little slips right there. 
and then pick any computer you want and you put the um the number in with the dash and everything okay. you're welcome i think you're still um unmuted <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, you're fine. <laughs> All right. Um, so you could do that homemade salsa with some whole grain tortillas. Again, those whole grain tortillas are going to have more fiber. Fiber helps keep us full throughout the day. It's all really, also really good for our digestion and our heart health. So going for something that has higher fiber content and that is always a good idea. Um, I usually recommend looking at the nutrition facts label for something that says three grams or more per serving. That's a good source of fiber. Um, you could do whole grain crackers with a low fat cheese, hummus, or a fresh guacamole. Those are all great options. All right, so here I just have some pictures of some great options for those holiday appetizers. Again, a veggie tray is always a great idea. Um, you can make it your own like hummus and greens. Um, little tray right here. So this is made with some hummus. Then we have some greens on top some cherry tomatoes, some pita chips in the middle, as you can see, and we made it into like a holiday wreath. So you can get creative with what you're bringing to the party. Um, this is one of my favorites. So this is just um, tomato, basil, and some mozzarella. And you could top this with a little bit of balsamic drizzle if you'd like. This is a great appetizer. And whenever I bring this to a party, most people love it. Um, so this is a great option. And tomato, basil, and mozzarella go really well together. Um, on the bottom here, we have just some whole grain baguette with maybe a little bit of low fat cream cheese and some salmon and dill. Over here, we have matzo balls with a little bit of the broth as like a shooter. We have a winter fruit salad, and then this is a homemade like charcuterie veggie tray. So these are all great options. And it's really fun to get creative during the holiday season with what you wanna to bring to a party or even just to make and bring to keep at your own house for people coming over. Um, so definitely going for something that has veggies or fruit is usually my go-to recommendation to try and make sure people are getting their vegetable and their fruit servings in. Um, so a fresh salad you could definitely bring if you want to bring something more essential to a meal as opposed to an appetizer. So like a side dish. So some kind of fresh salad. You can make a soup. A homemade soup is an excellent way um, to bring something hearty to a meal. So you could definitely make your own homemade soup. I usually recommend going with a low sodium broth or bouillon when you're making a base for a soup. Um, and do, if you're doing a cream based soup, do something with a little bit of a reduced fat cream. You can make a fun uh, roasted veggie salad. So this here has some pomegranates in it, has some um, butternut squash. So we're using some great fall flavors um, that also are winter. Then we have a Brussels sprout with Parmesan. This is a great option as well. So again, you can see we're using a lot of fresh ingredients um, and we're also trying to incorporate, fill some kind of nutritional gap. So a lot of our greens, we're using um, a lot of seeds or vegetables in our soups and in our salads or our sides. So building a healthful holiday meal is really important. Again, I always recommend going from my plate style of eating so trying to get three food groups in with each meal. So again, our fruits and our veg vegetables should make up half of our plate. Most people don't get enough of our produce right here. So these are really important. And that's what I usually recommend starting with when you're thinking about bringing a holiday dish. Um, our grains, whole grains are really important. So a whole grain dinner roll, um, if you wanted to bring, like I said, for an appetizer, whole grain crackers or tortillas with some kind of dip, that's always a good idea. Um, protein, it's important to have your protein with every meal and snack. So something with protein is always good to bring as well. And then you have your dairy. So dairy is a touchy subject for some people. Some people are lactose intolerant and you might want to skip on the dairy. And um, if you know someone is lactose intolerant or several people are, that might be something you want to skip on or do a lactose free option. So for our grains, we want to go for whole wheat. So something like a whole wheat bread stuffing, whole wheat bread rolls, something with a little bit more fiber. For our dairy, a 1% low fat or fat-free milk, reduced fat cheeses, things like that. So we're decreasing our saturated fat intake. For our proteins, like a white meat turkey is a little bit better for us with the skin removed. So we're definitely decreasing that saturated fat, especially if you have anyone in your family or any friends who need to follow a heart healthy diet, this would be important for them. For our vegetables, a salads are always great to start off your meal because you're getting a lot of fresh produce, you're getting your vitamins, your minerals, you're getting some fiber depending on what's in the salad. 
Um, steamed vegetables or roasted vegetable vegetables are also really great. And then for our fruits, so fruits can also make a really sweet treat. So you could also do a great fruit dish for a dessert. So fruit salad, fresh cut up fruit, like cranberry salad, things like that. All right, so my plate holiday style. So we have a plate on the left and we have a plate on the right. So why don't you look at these two pictures and spot what differences do you notice between these two plates? If anyone wants to unmute themselves and let me know, or if you want to type in the chat, feel free. There's a lot less greens in the picture on the left. Correct. Anyone else? So if you see on the picture on the left, we have a lot more carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are really important for us. They're our body's main source of energy. But if we have a whole plate full of carbohydrates, we're probably having a little bit too much. We wanna balance out that plate, remember. So we wanna make sure we're having our carbohydrates. So whether that's a stuffing, mashed potatoes, um, something along those lines, we wanna make sure we're having our protein. So we wanna have chicken, turkey, fish. Those are great lean sources of protein. Um, and we also, removing the skin on poultry is always a good idea for most people just because it does have more saturated fat. Um, so watching the serving sizes of the types of food that we're having, but also making sure it's balanced. So again, you said green. So yes, we have our Brussels sprouts on our plate on the right. We don't really have too many greens on the left. That's fine. Um, as long as we're getting some kind of vegetable in, something more non-starchy, especially because this plate on the left has a lot of starch or carbohydrates. Going for a non-starchy vegetable will give us just as much nutrition with less carbohydrates, especially if we have a lot of other carb-heavy foods. Okay, and then we have our cranberries over here. So we're also getting a fruit serving. So this plate on the right is a little bit more well-balanced than the plate on the left. And again, watching serving sizes, you can always go back for seconds, um, but we don't wanna overfill ourselves because it's on our plate and we think that we have to finish the food on the plate. All right. So portion, palm size serving of turkey is typically a serving size for most people if you have a regular adult end. Um, so it's usually about three to four ounces. So usually about the size of your palm right here. Um, for our potatoes or other starches, if you, again, if you have a regular standard adult size hand, if your hand's a little bit large, it might be a little bit smaller than that, but about a fifth size serving of potatoes or another starch on the plate. Um, and then pile those veggies high. So again, our veggies are really good sources of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. So we're getting a lot of nutrition for not too many calories. So it's a great thing to get more bulk into your diet. So if you're really hungry, getting more of those veggies is better than getting a lot of that, those potatoes. <clears throat> so look for salads, your steamed options. So steamed veggies, you can also do roasted veggies. You wanna watch out for loaded veggie casseroles because they all have more fat. Um, typically more saturated fat and usually mo more sodium as well. So more salt. Um, so if that's some kind of concern for you for your diet, if you're on a heart healthy diet or something along those lines, you want to watch out for casseroles. You can still have them, but you want to watch out for the serving size that you're having. All right. And then challenge. So during a holiday, it's important to make sure that we're watching what types of foods that we're having. Um, but I like to recommend looking over all the options before you start serving yourself or grab, putting things on your plate. So you know what's available to you and what you wanna put on your plate to balance out that meal. So look at all the options before you start putting things on your plate. Because maybe you put some potatoes on your plate and it's a big heaping pile of mashed potatoes on your plate. And then later on you see the stuffing and you'd much rather have the stuffing than the potatoes. So maybe you start with the stuffing and you have a smaller serving size of it. And then you're still hungry after your meal, you go back for a smaller serving size of the, those potatoes. That's better than having a large serving size of just one. So you're still enjoying the foods that you want to, but you're being mindful of your serving sizes. Nutrition every day. So remember that eating healthy is a choice. Um, no one eats healthy 100% of the time, not even registered dietitians. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a choice. I like to recommend thinking about what the food is doing for you. So if you're sitting down and you're having a bowl of ice cream at, right before you go to sleep, think about what that food is doing for you. 
It probably has a lot of fat to it. It probably has a lot of sugar to it. And you're having a whole bowl full. So it's probably more than a serving size. So if you're having that right before you go to sleep, you're probably elevating your blood sugar a little bit. You're having a little bit more fat than you necessarily need, depending on what kind of dinner you had. Um, so it might not be the best option, maybe having a serving size and having it farther away from the time you go to sleep. So your body's able to digest it. So that's just an example, um, but definitely being mindful of what types of food provide you with which nutrients and also what's going to help you versus what might hurt you down the line. Um, so being mindful of that. Um, and eating healthy, it doesn't mean that you can cannot enjoy those, those less healthy options. You can definitely still, I recommend everything in moderation. If you like apple pie and you have it typically only on Christmas, you can definitely have that apple pie. Um, don't have half the pie, have a serving size of pie, um, but you can definitely have that pie if you enjoy it. Um, choosing healthier foods and focusing on nourishing your body overall will lead to better health outcomes. So again, food is fuel for our bodies but it also does a lot of different things in our bodies. So we wanna make sure we're getting enough vitamins, minerals, especially if you're not taking a multivitamin. Um, so making sure that we're getting a variety of different food choices. Um, so our macronutrients, our carbohydrates, our protein and our fat. So making sure we're having healthy sources of all of these. Um, choosing foods that provide us with our micronutrients as well as I talked about those vitamins and minerals, primarily coming from produce, but also coming from whole grains and our meats. Um, decreasing certain types of macronutrients and micronutrients that have been shown to increase diet, disease risks. So excess sugar in the diet, excess sodium, saturated fat, trans fat. So these things, if you consume them in excess or on a regular basis, they can definitely lead to um, increased disease risk. So we do want to mind, be mindful of that. Um, so these are things that most people can decrease in their diet. So again, if it's something that you have once in a while, you can definitely enjoy it. But choosing those healthier foods more frequently is better for you. So some cooking modifications, because I do get this question a lot around this time of the year, sugar. Um, so in baked goods, you can half the sugar in baking, baking recipes and add one teaspoon of vanilla for flavor. Um, you can make cranberry sauce from scratch as opposed to using the canned or um, bottled cranberry sauce. You can use fresh fruit or spices as toppings for dessert, as opposed to like whipped cream and ice cream and things like that. Um, choose sugar-free beverages like seltzer as opposed to a soda. So you're still getting that carbonation and a little bit of flavor, but you're not getting all that sugar. Um, try a sugar substitute if you like to put it in your coffee or tea or even baking. Um, so stevia is more of a natural sugar substitute than a lot of the other artificial options. So a lot of artificial sweeteners are things like Splenda, Sweet and Low, um, Equal. Um, I do recommend stevia more frequently. So stevia is actually derived from a plant and it's better for us. Um, so instead of using sugar, let's say you or somebody in your family has diabetes and they really need to watch their sugar intake, but they do like to enjoy baked goods. You could substitute sugar for stevia. Stevia doesn't have an impact on the blood sugar like sugar will. So that would be a great option. Um, and then also roasting vegetables brings out their natural sweetness. So you don't need to add sugar to roasted veggies. Um, so caramelizing option, that's a great option. For our fat, you can use a fat-free or a low sodium chicken broth to base turkey and make gravy. So we're decreasing um, the fat content and the sodium content a little bit. You can try applesauce or mashed avocado instead of butter and baking. Um, you can reduce oil whenever you can, you wanna measure it. Um, so oil is a healthy fat if you're going for a oil that is liquid at room temperature, like an olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, they're healthier sources than if you were to use a coconut oil or a palm oil, they're more of a saturated fat. Um, you can try plain yogurt or reduced fat sour cream and dips. Um, so for example, those two dips that I mentioned, I like to do like a fruit dip with some um, low fats Greek yogurt and peanut butter. And then for a savory dip, I'll do that low fat Greek yogurt with um, some kind of Italian seasoning. Um, you can also use the yogurt or the reduced fat sour cream with mashed potatoes or casseroles to decrease that saturated fat intake a little bit. And you can remove the skin before eating turkey because that turkey skin or that chicken skin will have more saturated fat. And then opt for light olive oil when roasting vegetables and extra virgin olive oil for dressings, ready to eat salads or vegetables. All right, now what you all came for, the holiday recipes. So for appetizers, 
This is a really fun one. This is bruschetta chopped triscuits. Um, so this is pretty simple. Um, it's just some hummus. I use a classic hummus with some cherry tomatoes, basil leaves, and surprisingly, the hint of salt triscuits are the lowest sodium. Um, so those would be a great option, especially if someone is following a heart healthy diet. Um, and then you just do a drop or two of dr uh, drizzled balsamic glaze on top. This is the cranberry pecan herb cheese truffle bite. So for these, we're using Triscuits again. Uh, I do recommend the hint of salt because they're lower sodium than most other flavors. Um, we're using dried cranberries and that are finely chopped and we're using um, packed fresh parsley, finely chopped, a little bit of pecans and then a garlic and herb cheese spread. So again, if there's a reduced fat option, always go for that. But you're just making these into little balls and this is something they could easily spread onto the cracker or eat as is. We have the winter holiday crostini trio. So this is a fun one. We're using some fresh fruit. So we're using some oranges, um, honey, cinnamon, ground cloves, French baguette. You could do, um, you could also, instead of French baguette, you could do like a whole wheat baguette. Um, some olive oil so for some healthy fats, some brie cheese, a little bit of butternut squash. So we're also getting some veggies in, skim ricotta, pomegranate arrows, so a little bit more fruit, baby arugula for garnish. You could also do spinach with this, um, some sherry vinegar, pistachios, red grapes. So you can see we're getting a lot of healthy fats. We're getting a lot of fruit and we're getting some vegetables with this. And then again, if you make that baguette a whole grain, you'll probably get some more fiber. Um, so this would be a great option as well. I know the text is kind of small, but I do have all of these saved to a PDF, so I can email that um, to the librarian and she can provide it to you if you would like. Um, this is a holiday spinach stuffed mushroom, so mushrooms are really great. Um, we're using a low sodium chicken broth or vegetable broth, a little bit of olive oil, um, some minced garlic, baby spinach, a little bit of goat cheese. You can also sub the goat cheese out for another reduced fat cheese if you'd like some Parmesan cheese, low fat cottage cheese, a little bit of shredded mozzarella cheese and panko breadcrumbs. I do recommend whole wheat panko breadcrumbs. And again, you don't have to use all these cheeses. Um, you can sub out some of the cheeses and maybe add in some diced veggies. That would be another way to increase your vegetable intake but decrease your saturated fat intake. A lemon chive latke cup with smoked salmon. Um, so this one's pretty easy. A potato pancake mix with eggs some potatoes, fresh chives, a little bit of lemon zest, some smoked salmon for some healthy omega-3s, um, a little bit of sour cream. I do recommend reduced fat and then some dill on top. Most people don't use enough herbs and spices. So definitely trying to get that in. You can see I used basil before. Now we're using some dill. Um, so trying to get some more flavor in. Then we have our main. So we have an orange rosemary turkey with cranberries and gravy. So if your family is the type that likes to have turkey on holidays, this would be a great option. Um, so we're using some onions, some carrots, some celery socks, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper to taste. You don't necessarily have to use the salt if you're following a low sodium diet. You could do that fresh rosemary, again, some more of those herbs, large oranges, frozen cranberries, some garlic powder, bay leaf, and I recommend low fat, low um, sodium chicken stock and making sure you're basting the turkey so you're keeping it moist. A garlic and rosemary studded strip roast. So for this one, we're using Angus beef, some dried rosemary, kosher salt, black pepper, extra virgin olive oil, some garlic and rosemary sprigs. So this would be a great option as well. And then we have a honey brown sugar glazed ham. So a lot of people eat ham during Christmas time or the holidays. Um, so for this, we're just using some honey, some brown sugar, ginger, mustard, and cinnamon. Um, again, you don't necessarily have to use the honey if you don't want the extra sugar. Um, sometimes they will just be a honey ham. So it already is flavored for you. Then we have a homestyle beef brisket. So this is really great as well. Um, so freshly ground pepper, paprika, some garlic, onion soup mix, or you can just, instead of doing the onion soup mix, if you want to decrease sodium, you can just cut up some onions um, for that onion flavor, some um, gravy mix, vegetable juice, um, onions, potatoes, carrots, and celery. So again, we're getting a lot of vegetables in, and you can also increase the vegetables if you'd like. 
So a vegetarian option. So tamari glazed tofu with warm herb oranges. So if any vegetarians are in your family, this may be a good option, making sure that there's vegetarian options for them. Um, so tofu is a soy-based product. So we have some tamari soy sauce. Um, you can also do instead of soy sauce to decrease the sodium, coconut aminos. So coconut aminos are a great alternative. Um, they are a little bit more expensive than a soy sauce. So you can do a reduced sodium soy sauce if you didn't want to spend the extra money on the coconut aminos. But coconut aminos are a natural um, derived product and they're really great because they're low in sodium compared to soy sauce. Um, and it tastes very similar. So you could do coconut aminos in place of the soy sauce. Um, we're just using some firm tofu, some grated ginger root, some vegetable oil, and some maple syrup. And um, if someone does not know how to cook tofu, I do have um, a handout that our dietitian from Sparta made, um, Samantha. She made a great um, how to cook tofu tip page. So if anyone's interested in that, you can definitely reach out to me. We have a winter vegetable lasagna. So again, another vegetarian option. Um, so we're using some fresh mozzarella, if the person consumes lactose, um, some Alfredo sauce, um, kale, um, some lasagna sheets, olive oil, butternut squash, and basil for garnish. So you can also do with this a um, dairy-free cheese, like a diet product. Then we have our sides. So some green beans and mushrooms. So this is using a little bit of peanut oil. Um, you can also sub out the peanut oil for another oil if someone has a peanut allergy. Some shallots, shiitake mushrooms, some green beans, and Asian style, Asian style Korean gochong sauce. Um, you can leave that out if you don't want um, an additional sauce to it. Um, you can also do like an almond um, green bean, like green beans almondine. I think I have a recipe in here for that as well. But this is a great option. Green beans are a great side dish. Green beans almondine. <laughs> so we have those fresh um, French green beans, unsalted butter, um, raw sliced almonds, some shallots, garlic cloves, um, zest of a lemon. I really love that because that really flavors the dish and really gives it a nice fragrance as well. Um, freshly squeezed lemon juice, kosher salt, that's optional. And then ground black, black pepper to taste. Again, that's optional as well. A rainbow ribbon salad. So this is one of my favorites. Um, so for this one, we're just using a carrot, yellow squash, some asparagus, olive oil, fresh lemon juice, a little bit of fresh orange juice. Whenever you use a um, fruit juice, I always recommend 100% fruit juice, nothing with added sugars. Um, some a little bit of honey, some poppy seeds, some red bell pepper, and some red cabbage. Um, so for this, we're using a vegetable peeler or a spiralizer to get that um, thin ribbon on the vegetables. Then we have a winter, winter farro salad. So this is a really great one. This one's peeled farro. So it's a, one of those ancient whole grains. Um, some raw pepitas or pumpkin seeds baby kale, some broccoli florets, purple cauliflower florets, olive oil, fresh lemon juice, some honey, some crumbled goat cheese, avocado, and pomegranate seeds. Pomegranate seeds are in season, so whenever um, they are, I always like to recommend recipes with them because they're a great option. Then we have cavatelli with cranberries and butternut squash. Um, so some cavatelli, two tablespoons olive oil. We're doing some butternut squash again, some more of those fall winter flavors, salt and black pepper. Um, that's optional. Three garlic cloves, some thyme. So we're using a different um, herb right now. Grated Parmesan cheese, a little bit of heavy cream and dried cranberries. So this is a great spin on cavatelli. A lot of people don't make it this way, I find. Um, so this is a great way to use some of those fall winter flavors into a dish that a lot of people make sweet herb roasted veggies. Um, so this, you can leave the bacon out or do like a turkey bacon to decrease that saturated fat intake. Um, some Brussels sprouts, baby potatoes, large diced um, celery root, um, diced carrots, some red onion, some uh, crumbled Montchev jalapeno honey. That's really great. And then you could also add some salt or pepper to taste. Uh, but this is a great different spin on roasted veggies. So just adding a couple different flavors in can change the whole flavor of the dish. So instead of just putting um, a bunch of these cut up veggies on a pan in the oven, you're adding a little bit to it to get more flavor out of it. So this is a potato mixed squash and goat cheese gratin. 
Um, so we're using some red potatoes, very thinly sliced, some zucchini, some yellow squash, leeks. As you can see, a lot of veggies in here as well. Goat cheese. Again, you can sub out the cheese if you're not a big fan of goat cheese. Um, salt, a little bit pinch of it, or you can leave it out. Some black pepper, um, a little bit of whole milk. You could also do a 2% or a 1% milk with this. Some Parmesan cheese, a little bit of basil leaves, and some rosemary. So you can see we're working in a lot of vegetables to these dishes and a lot of um, herbs to flavor. Roasted apple and Brussels sprout salad. So we are using some unsalted walnuts, Granny Smith apple, Brussels sprouts, olive oil, sage, nutmeg, and honey. Um, so this is an easy one, four servings, 20 minutes cook time. You can multiply it if you're making it for several people. But this is a great thing that you could just have in a bowl with um, some tongs so that people can increase their vegetable and their fruit intake. Um, it's actually really yummy. And then we have our dessert. So this is a simple strawberry sauvignon. Um, so we're using a little bit of flour, some yeast, um, a little bit of sugar and salt, some milk, butter, egg yolks, um, vegetable oil to deep fry it, um, powdered sugar and strawberry preserves. So this is a traditional dish that often is served for Hanukkah. So this would be a great um, recipe for next year if you do partake in Hanukkah, considering Hanukkah I believe has passed already. Um, but this would be a great option. Again, it's not the healthiest option, but it's a traditional dish. So we definitely, nutrition is important, but if there's something that you enjoy, you can still make it work, um, even though it's not the healthiest option. We're only human, we don't have perfect diets, um, but this would be a great option for you if you like to have dishes like that. A winter fruit salad. So again, I like to mention that fruit is a great sweet dish. So a lot of people crave sweet dishes for desserts. So this would be a great option if you're trying to incorporate healthier choices. Um, so we're using some pomegranate, some honey, a little bit of fresh grated ginger, oranges, um, apples. So you could do a Fuji, a Gala, a Granny Smith. You could do any kind of apple that you'd like. Um, pears. And then we're also doing some seedless red grapes in here. So this is a great fresh fruit salad that you could do. Chocolatey gingerbread cake pops. Because again, if there's some flavors that you like, definitely make them. Um, certain dishes and also having a variety of different um, recipes is really important so you can pick and choose what you think your family and friends would like best. Um, and it's also important to switch it up. So if you bring the same thing every year and people don't really touch it, maybe try and bring something else. Um, so this one is using some ginger snap cookies, some cream cheese, some cookie butter, some dark chocolate chips, vegetable oil. Um, you're using the pops, cake pop sticks. Um, a little bit of ground cinnamon, and then you're using a block of sour foam so that you can um, hold them up. But this is a great option if someone likes cake pops, and they're also smaller, so it's more portion controlled. So something like this would be a great idea, especially if you have a lot of diabetics in the family. Uh, mini chocolate mousse cheesecakes. Um, so for here, we're using chocolate wafer cookies, some unsalted butter, honey, bittersweet chocolate chips, non-fat milk, some fat-free cream cheese, powdered sugar, um, unsweetened cocoa powder, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, vanilla extract, and a little bit of like a whipped topping. Um, chocolate mousse is a great option. Um, and if you do have anyone who has blood sugar issues in the family, you could sub out the powdered sugar. We do have um, more natural sweeteners that are not sugar that are made into a powdered sugar-like consistency, like a stevia or a monk fruit. Baked apples, this is one of my favorites to recommend because a lot of people will have apple pie around this time of year. Um, but baked apples are just as good for us. They're a little bit, they decrease the sugar a little bit as well. Um, so doing some Mott's no sugar added applesauce um, with some thinly sliced unpeeled apples. So you're getting some more fiber from that peel. A little bit of granulated sugar or sugar substitute. Um, real lemon, lemon juice some ground cinnamon, uncooked rolled oats. So uncooked rolled oats are a whole grain. So you're getting some fiber with that. A little bit of firmly packed light brown sugar, all purpose flour, some skim milk, some dry milk powder and non-fat yogurt. Um, if you do a Greek yogurt, it has more protein to it. So this is a great option. Stuffed strawberries. So again, we're incorporating that fruit. So some slivered almonds, fresh strawberries, a little bit of cream cheese powdered sugar and orange zest. So we're filling these strawberries with that mixture a little bit, rolling them in the slivered almonds, um, and we're getting that fruit, that strawberry. 
And then some beverage options. So we have um, Simply Refreshing Blueberry Lime and Mint Mojito Mocktail. So we're using some blueberries in there for garnish. You can also muddle some on the bottom of the glass um, to get some flavor in the actual beverage. We're using two lime wedges, six mint leaves, um, some dark brown sugar. You could do that optionally. Um, some lime mint seltzer and crushed ice. Um, so you can definitely have, if you drink alcohol throughout the holiday season, you definitely can. Um, they're usually considered empty calories. Um, so if weight loss or weight maintenance is something that you want to try and continue throughout the holiday season, you might want to be mindful of alcohol. Uh, so mocktails are always a great option if you wanted to use those, um, or even if you just wanted to stay more hydrated. Um, alcohol can be a little bit dehydrating, so doing a mocktail might be a little bit of a better option. If you do partake in alcohol, usually clear liquors are lower in calories and sugar. So doing like something on the rocks with um, a seltzer water would be a better option than a cocktail with a lot of fruit juices and things like that. Um, there's cranberry seltzer mocktail. So for this one, we're using cranberry juice. Again, use 100% fruit juice whenever you use juices, something with little to no added sugar. Um, some orange juice, some honey, and a little bit of sparkling water with some fresh cranberries for garnish. A coquito. So we're using some coconut milk. Um, some sweetened condensed milk, some evaporated milk, ground, um, ground cinnamon, and ground nutmeg. So this one's a great option as well if this is a traditional dish that you like to make during the holidays, you and your family. Um, and laying up alcoholic beverages. So hard seltzers tend to be a little bit better for you. Um, something, a translucent spirit, so like vodka, gin, rum, tequila, for anyone over 21, <laughs> you could do it on the rocks with some ice mixed with a seltzer or a soda water with no um, added sugar. Muddle the fruit on the bottom of the glass for some natural sweetness. Um, you can also use some fruit for garnish or some herbs for garnish. So top with herbs like rosemary, mint, things like that. So you're having a fun cock uh, mocktail um, or cocktail, depending on what you choose. Um, but you're also still getting some flavor from that fresh fruit or the herbs. And it's always important to remember that holidays are a time that you wanna spend with your friends and your family. And you also wanna enjoy holiday foods, whether it's something that someone brings every year or a new dish. Um, you can definitely make most things work unless you're on a very restrictive diet, um, whether it's for um, someone with renal disease, they might need to be a little bit more restrictive. Someone with diabetes, they may need, need to be a little bit more restrictive, but overall you can make most things work for the holidays. Um, no one has the perfect diet. It's always important to be mindful of what we're eating, but also enjoy the foods that we'd like to. So each time you sit down to eat, it's a chance to make a healthier, more nourishing food choice. And that's something that I like to recommend to everyone. All right, does anyone have any questions for me? Um, you can feel free to unmute yourself or type in the chat box. 